It's Nolan. What's going on, y'all? It's the kid J. Nolan here. Welcome to another episode of the Pin Game Elite Podcast. For those of y'all that don't know what this is, this is where we take deeper dives into the music industry, into the music business, right? This isn't about no gossip. This isn't about no beef. None of that type of stuff, okay? This show is more about the technical aspects of the industry, the dealings, the signings, the money that's at stake. All that type of stuff, all right? So today we're going to be talking about Megan Thee Stallion's new deal with Warner Music Group. She's decided to remain independent, quote unquote. So we're going to break down what that actually means, right? She just put her new single out called Cobra uh, not too long ago, about a month and some change ago. Um, It definitely took the industry by storm. This was her first independent release since being signed to uh, 1501 Entertainment, which was also distributed through 300 Entertainment, which was also owned by Warner Music Group. So in this situation, she's decided to get all the middlemen out the way and go direct through Warner, which is a big deal, being that she is electing to remain independent, quote unquote. She's not utilizing all of the firepower that the label has at their disposal. But we're going to get into all that in just a moment. Let's get to the meat and potatoes of it. All right. Megan Thee Stallion is new release strategy. Indy with an assist from a major okay the rapper will work with warner music group for distribution and services which is an arrangement that is becoming more common for stars with leverage that's what they say on billboard after splitting with her original record label in october megan Thee stallion is entering a new era a source at warner music group confirmed to billboard that the artist has signed a distribution agreement with the company that includes services from a select global team. For years, Megan Thee Stallion was embroiled in a legal battle over the deal she signed early in her career with 1501 Certified Entertainment, which released her music in partnership with 300 Entertainment, as I stated, all of this stuff already. In October, the rapper and 1501 reached a confidential settlement to resolve their legal differences, making Megan Thee Stallion, who's managed by Rock Nation, a free agent. She said, I'm so excited to be doing something for the first time independent since it was just me and my mama. Okay. Now, why is a distribution deal important to somebody like a Megan Thee Stallion, right? Now, I want to go ahead and put it out there. Don't confuse Megan Thee Stallion with your average independent artist, okay? I'm an independent artist myself. I don't got Warner Music. You know what I mean? I don't got no direct distro deal with nobody. I'm trying to get there, right? Don't confuse her with the Russes of the world, the La Russells of the world, the Sabas, the Chance the Rappers, right? Those artists are truly independent. They don't have the labels in their pocket. Megan Thee Stallion, she kind of gets to have the best of both worlds. So artists prize distribution deals because they typically get to retain ownership of their recordings. Remember, she was talking about hot girl productions. So that's the, the leverage and the opportunity to have her own company, which means that the sales, the streams, the money, all the uh, master value that she got from Cobra, All of that trickles down to her company, Hot Girl Productions. So at the same time, Megan Thee Stallion will still benefit from WMG's global infrastructure, marketing muscle, and longstanding relationships at radio and television. And this is why I say not to confuse her with other people that are independent, because she still gets Warner, which is still one of the biggest media label conglomerates in the world. She gets their infrastructure. She gets their marketing, right? Which is The most important thing for an artist, if you don't have any marketing, nobody knows your music is out. If nobody knows it, they're not going to buy it. They're not going to stream it because they weren't aware. And of course, she's still going to get the relationships at radio and television, which keep her on those natural terrestrial outlets, right? Still going to get her on the radio in all of your cities and states. Still going to have her on TV. Still going to have, you know, those limited music video outlets like The Revolts, like uh, BET, whenever they want to show music, you know how it goes, man. Not to mention advertising on all of these different outlets. Her team will also include some staffers from 300 entertainment, which was the company she was previously signed to through 1501. So some of those people that were helping her, I guess she kind of handpicked who she wanted to come with her. They say these types of distribution agreements within major label systems have become more common in the modern music industry once artists start to gain a certain amount of leverage. Some young acts that have fast climbing viral hits are even able to negotiate similarly favorable agreements right at the start of their careers, which would have been unthinkable a decade ago. And that's absolutely correct. 
one of the first artists that I seen kind of utilize this type of structure was Macklemore, right? Y'all remember when Thrift Shot was like on and popping? A lot of people were wondering how the hell did he come out of nowhere with this smash hit and nobody knows who this guy is. Well, he used one of uh, Warner Music's distribution arms, one of their subsidiary companies, but they gave him the firepower, the radio and television divisions, right? So he was able to kind of get the best of both worlds at that time. Again, this is something that did not really exist as much prior to like 2010. Now they say there is a potential downside to these types of arrangements because labels stand to earn less revenue from distribution deals. They may be less incentivized to throw their full weight behind these artists. Still, this is a dream scenario for many artists because it inverts the traditional music industry power dynamics. So that means to tell you typically in a, in a distribution deal, the artist kind of retains anywhere between 80 to 90% of their music ownership. This is why it's so important. In a standard record deal, you get 18% of your own music, 19, 20% of your own music, and the label keeps the rest and they own it in perpetuity in a lot of cases. Perpetuity is a fancy word for forever in a day. But now with this distribution construct, Megan Thee Stallion gets to completely reverse the business structure and say, I keep 80%, y'all get 20% or 10%, depending on, you know, the deal terms where y'all are just going to be making sure that my music gets out to the proper platforms. I'm going to use you guys for these services and I compensate you based on the services that I get from you. Y'all not owning my music. Y'all don't get to tell me what music to make. Y'all don't get to have anything to do with my creative process. I bring you what I'm ready to put out. Y'all make sure it happens. Let's take meetings, which I think she's probably going to give up you know, a little bit more percentage wise, just to make sure that Warner music is happy because they're going to put a lot in, but we'll see as a result of these types of shifts in the industry, the term independent has become very roomy, almost meaningless, right? It now stretches from an act like myself, you know, releasing homemade recordings. I got this studio here. I do music and content in here, you know, and I'm able to take my music to any di digital distribution that I please put it out. That's why I play my song. Let's get it at the end of every video, you know, cause that's additional marketing and promotion, but an artist like bad bunny, they call him independent, but he's signed to the orchard, which is owned by Sony music. And the money that the orchard gave him was a result of Sony music making the investment, right? So it's kind of like he has two teams backing him, but his company that he's originally signed to, they still retain the ownership of his music. They still retain the ownership of his uh, his concerts, his merch, all of this type of stuff. They negotiated a very fair deal on his end, which, you know, they're investigating his company. They're trying to say that they got drug money back in them. But uh, we won't get into all that this evening. Now, the big distinction between all of this is self-funding versus receiving funding from an outside source. If y'all remember Megan Thee Stallion's announcement to begin with, she was saying that she put all the money up for the release of Cobra. She paid the producers. She paid for the artwork photo shoots. She paid for the music video. She paid for the radio campaigns. Anything that came out as a result of that record, she fronted all the money, which that could have cost her hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars. It takes a lot to invest that type of money in yourself as an artist and hope to try to make it back. But the good thing is when your fans show up, you take all that money, you keep it to yourself, you distribute it amongst your partners, your collaborators, etc., and you take home whatever's left. I'm sure she ate very well off Cobra, which made this type of deal very appealing to her because she like, damn, I ain't seen this type of money when I was signed to the motherfucking clowns. Right. And now she doesn't have to worry about Carl Crawford talking about, oh, this isn't considered an album. Oh, this particular project doesn't count towards your record commitment. All the funny shit that they were trying to pull over there because she wanted to get away. So they were just trying to prolong the process. They were trying to block her from doing international features, which was going to continue to grow her brand and help her to continue to get away from them niggas. They tried to put a block up at every turn now that they've got an amicable agreement to get them out of her business, she can now do whatever the fuck she wants. And the fact that Megan Thee Stallion has been a mainstream artist for the past five years now, she's got a lot of cultural cachet 
you know, she's done all these brand deals, the hot girl sauce and all of this stuff at Popeye's, right? She's on TV all the time. She's been in the Hulk, all this crazy shit. So she's got a massive amount of publicity. She's going to continue to get those, those deals as well because she's managed by Rock Nation. So she also has their firepower, their relationships, right? So she's got a lot of goddamn ammo behind her. She's not just standing out there by herself. She's got a lot of protection. She's got a lot of extremely smart pe business people in her corner. So I don't think she's going to take a hit. I think she's only going to continue to grow. And again, once you're in a position of power where you could own your masters, she's probably going to drop a new album in 2024. She might drop two albums, depending on how lucrative the first one is. Because I'm telling you, when you're able to dictate what you want to do in your career, the shit opens up so much for you. It opens up your perspective. It opens up your pocketbook. You know what I mean? It opens up the budget to be like, well, shit. If I could go in the studio, she could probably, man, if Megan doesn't already have a studio in her home by now, she needs to do that. Instead of going to these, these fucking big ass studios, paying goddamn 500 an hour, some crazy shit, get a studio in your crib, get motherfucking, uh, little Jew on the beat. Had that nigga come to the house for two weeks, cook up. Y'all put together a dope ass album, EP, whatever y'all want to do. Drop that shit. Tour that shit for about, you ain't even got to do a major tour. Do six to eight weeks. Just moving around where you can. Push that shit. Do press. Go to the breakfast club. Go, you know, you're not going to go to Joe Budden. <laughs> but go to the breakfast club. Go to Angela Yee. She got two shows. She got uh Way Up with Angela Yee. She got Lip Service, which... Lip service is extremely on brand with all the ladies in hip hop. I don't understand why they're not going on there to talk sex and talk all the nasty shit they be saying in their lyrics. But Megan, that's a good one for you. Go to Angie Martinez, go to the LA leakers, drop a freestyle, do your shit and drop capsules, do two capsules a year, do one collection with eight songs, make a whole album and just release it in pieces. Like, it just opens up so many doors for you. Not to mention, she already has the resources to get popping on TikTok. Her music's always streaming on Instagram. So no matter what she does, as long as she continues to give people the bops that they came for, to give people the bounce that they came for, the imagery that they came for, she's going to continue to keep dominating no matter who's behind her. So I think this is a win-win situation for Megan Thee Stallion. This gives her more access to ownership, gives her more money in returns from the profits of her music. It gives her more creativity to actually go in with her management group, Rock Nation, and say, this is what I want to pull off. And she doesn't have any resistance from the label because there is no label, right? They're just the distribution company. She effectively becomes the label. She's still going to get awards. She's still going to get to perform at the award shows. I think that's going to help bring her even more publicity as if she accepts like, okay, let's get back out here. Let's do the BET Awards. Let me do the BET Hip Hop Awards. Can we get on the Grammys performing? Can I get on the AMAs? Right. Every award show she needs to hit this year if she can, because, again, everything is going to be coming internal. That also means that she's going to face some um, some setbacks. She's not going to want to invest millions of dollars just to make it. So if she's got to do some TV performances that might be free just to help people see her more often, which is going to generate more sales for the project, more visibility for, for the project, because her marketing budget ain't going to be crazy like that. She needs to do it. So if y'all see. Megan Thee Stallion is like, damn, Megan Thee Stallion been outside like crazy lately. That's why. If y'all can't tell, I'm super excited by this. This music industry, music business shit excites me way more than the beefs, all of the drama, people going back and forth. That stuff is cool for, you know, talking and engagement. But when it comes to the nuts and bolts of the industry, that's really what gets me going. You feel me? Let me know what y'all think of all this down below in the comments. Be sure to like and share this video. If this is your first time seeing me on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Be sure to subscribe to the Pen Game Elite podcast, right? Add that playlist, save it. So any video that's similar to this, that's more technical, more detailed about the industry, you'll get it. You can add the Pen Game Elite podcast on any podcast platform from Spotify, Apple Podcasts, all of them. It's available for you on there. You can subscribe to get the audio version. Spotify, they'll show this video version as well. 
check that out for all my artists, producers, people that was trying to get into the industry. That's where we're going to start doing interviews. I'm going to have people on my channel talking to other people in the industry just to give y'all that extra content, that extra context about how things go. We're going to be talking about mental health in the music industry. We're going to be talking about, um, artists that have found success in alternative methods that don't have to go through record deals. We're going to be showing folks how to actually make this stuff happen with the small resources. All right. Again, let me know what y'all think down below in the comments. I'm going to see y'all on the next one, man. I'm going to take y'all out with Let's Get It One Good Time. And I'll see y'all later. Yeah. King of my city in cul de sac. Uh. Coming, I swing like soldier rag. Yeah. Leading my people like quarterback. Why I study this shit, I'm an almanac. Yeah. Had to get up and grind. Knowledge is booming, I'm here to apply. Yeah. Came with the chip and the dip, it just single the mind. We finna do more to survive. I need my shit. Yeah. Spinning the block for the Gouda, we hitting the jeweler to flood out the net. Yeah. We don't do beef on computers, so I'm straight out the sewer, we come when you rest. Yeah. Niggas be looking perplexed, so keeping my foot on their neck. Uh -huh. No map, I trust my gut for the quest. With drama, I'm fully abreast. Yeah. I was ready for years and they doubted me. Uh -huh. All of a sudden, they tell me they proud of me. Yeah. I've been dropping these haters. Like calories, uh, cross my mind, I came back with some batteries. Stand for my honor, but you run no gunner. Packing a stick with a drum. Wanna catch my bad one fumble? I done came too far to be humble.